So we are here on my favorite day of, you know, deep diving and dissecting all of the cool properties of rose on this day because it is the best day and that is the rose hip day. We're going to talk all about rose hips because I don't know if you know this, but rose hips, they come from roses. They're part of the bush. It's a good time. Yeah, we're going to talk more about rose hips and why I like them way more than just the rose essential and just the rose, you know, petals and all the jazz in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And you are here for another round of all things rose. And today, as I said, we are focusing on rose hip. We're going to be doing some rose hip extractions, both in oil form and water form today. And while we do that, we are going to talk about the benefits of rose hip and why that's different than rose essential oil or your rose absolutes. There are a lot of reasons why I prefer rose hip to rose so far in this you know, exploration. And I really want to tell you all about them. I mean, just high level, I really like the amount of fatty acids that come from the rose hip versus the rose petals. The rose petals, they're really hard to release those fatty acids, really hard to release, release those oils. And for what you get, it's not a huge payout. The rose hip, the actual berry of the rose bush, that's not the case at all. It very easily and readily releases all of its goodness, much like we saw with the coffee beans in last month's stuff. And so I'm thinking it's probably going to be the better way to incorporate all of the benefits that you're going to get from your rose plant into your soaps and your cosmetics. And with the price point that you have for rose hip versus your rose essential oils, I think you might be agreeing with me by the end of this too. So anyway, let's get to the infusions. We're going to talk about all things rose hip, why I love it so much, and why I'm excited to use it in our formulations and everything moving forward this month. Okay, we get to talk about rose hip today and I'm super duper excited. We are going to be doing two different infusions, one in water, which is, you know, an easy an easy win there. Rose hip tea is a whole thing. Very, very good for you. You look it up, it's good for you internally, but we're going to be talking about the topical benefits of rose hip, specifically obviously the rose hip oil, the stuff that we can extract using a water and an oil extraction method for both. So while we do that, let's go ahead and talk about all the benefits of rosehip oil. So what do we know? Rosehip oil is derived from the seeds of the rose bushes and it is packed with skin nourishing vitamins and essential fatty acids. Now rosehip oil is known for its exceptional regenerative and healing properties. So topically, we are looking at and anti-aging properties. So it's rich in vitamin A, which is retinol and vitamin C, which are both obviously known for their anti-aging properties. And what that's going to do for your skincare regimen and your cosmetics is it's going to help stimulate collagen production and reduce wrinkles and fine lines. Insert, you know, warning here or whatever. We don't make any sort of uh, medical claims with our, our our cosmetics. You 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 get it, okay? In addition, rose hip oil is also highly moisturizing. Now, why? Because rose hip oil has a lot more fatty acids than the rose oil that you're going to get from the actual petals, what you're going to be able to extract. There's a higher amount of it. So it's going to be an easier sell to get all those fatty acids out via the rose hip versus the, uh, the actual rose petals. And all those moisturizing properties in the fatty acids, cosmetically, they're going to keep our skin nice and hydrated, soft and supple, going to improve our elasticity and strengthen the skin's barrier. So these are all great things for, you know, cosmetic topical things. But since we're talking about fatty acids, this is also important within our soap making. How can this change our soaps? Is this going to provide a more moisture rich experience when we are using it in soap form? And the answer to that is like totally yes, but let's continue on with the benefits while we prepare the oil infusion of rosehip now. So 
So in addition to being highly moisturizing, good for anti-aging, let's go back to the vitamin C. The vitamin C is also known as a skin brightener. So the high vitamin C content in rosehip oil can help brighten the skin and improve the overall texture and tone. But additionally, because of all the antioxidants and the really beautiful fatty acids contained within rose hip, uh, it's going to be really great for scar and hyperpigmentation reduction. So it's going to be helping reduce scars, your dark, dark spots, any sort of acne scarring, uh, melasma, those sorts of things. Also, while it's promoting your skin regeneration and improving your skin's overall texture. So along with that, since we have antioxidants in it and all of these awesome benefits, uh, obviously you probably are aware rosehip oil is going to be good a good anti-inflammatory. So it has really great anti-inflammatory properties because of the presence of the polyphenols, which is going to help with you know your reducing of your redness, uh, skin irritation. Usually very good for people with sensitive skin, all of the jazz. So. In comparison, like from rose hip oil to the rose oil, that scout that's uh, crush, crushing those up right now, by the way, she wanted to help. It's a fun time for sure. What I'm doing right here though, what I'm about to do is I'm gonna put my hand in this and I 100% recommend that you never do that. Do, do not do that because as soon as I did that, all the stuff that's inside each of these little seeds, each of these berries, that's all the, like the fluff that then gets, you know, blown away with the wind and you know more rose bushes exist and all the stuff that stuff is very very pokey and so i ended up with all these little burrs in my hand for hours and hours afterwards it was not a good time do not put your hands in the rose hip after you've crushed them up just don't do it anyway so when we're looking at again rose hip between the rose petals they're both unique and they have benefits and uses in you know it's skin in skincare and with rose oil it's good for soothing and hydrating and it's highly aromatic and that's really the big benefit of rose oil over rose hip right now is going to be the aromatherapy uh, you know benefits and so i would really like to say that so far i'm going to be going with rose hip oil over the rose oil so you know stuff from the berries from the seeds over the actual petals themselves because rosehip oil is definitely renowned for its regenerative and healing abilities now for me because we're talking about cosmetics within all of this what that's going to do for the actual cosmetic applications it's much more beneficial like i said at the beginning of all of this rose oil yeah it's great it's cool it's whatever but it's really expensive and for the benefits that it gives for the skin there are lots and lots of other essential oils that can do the same thing and so for me i'm like i don't super get it for rose hip especially considering the price point i'm totally down like putting this into a cosmetic infusing this into like a face oil and then adding some additional extracts from some other botanicals it would be a really really good thing for your overall cosmetic you know skincare formulation i think <laughs> All right, now on to the reveal of all of this. Now, this, uh, the tea, the rose water, it's steeped for, uh, well, I guess we're not doing the tea first. We're doing the oil first. And it's steeped for about a day and a half. And you can already tell the color of it is so gorgeous. It's this beautiful golden color. And considering I started out with a green tea oil that was very, very yellow in tone, it's telling how just golden and gorgeous this became. I mean, that's starting to look like an olive oil. It's just a really lovely it's it's absolutely divine for sure and a lot of the oils are coming out as i'm continuing to press everything down now again it's only two days with this uh, with this infusion and i already have super awesome benefits things that i really did not see much of within the rose extraction through the rose petals and so again obviously a fan because there's a pretty big payout with all of this and if i had let this sit longer it would have just continued to just take everything out of those crushed rose hips and continue to impart those into the carrier oil effectively that we have here, which is great because that means that I'm getting in this particular infusion, the benefits of my green tea oil, as well as the benefits of, you know, the rose hip. And so I'm winning. Now I am double filtering this uh, just because I wanted to make sure that I got all the little bits of the rose hips out of it. I do want to be using this within cosmetics. So I do want to make sure that it's a double filtration within all of this. If I were putting this in soap, I probably wouldn't care as much. But since I am going to be using this for our cosmetic series, because I am in love with this rose hip oil, like I said, 
extra filtration for sure. Now, this is going to be obviously really, really good because of the signs of the aging and the scars and the hyper hyperpigmentation. I think this is going to be a really good thing to put into cosmetics and leave on products. Absolutely. You can see, see, you see the stuff in there. It's amazing. It's just the little molecules of your rosehip oil all hanging out with it. It's delightful. Now for the tea itself, this only sat for less than a day and it's obviously big, beautiful, bright color. But what I was most surprised about with all of it was the amount of oil that came from this. And so after I've taken this out, I do go ahead and do a double filtration with this because I want to squeeze everything I possibly can out of the rose hips themselves before really looking at it all. But as I was doing this, I already noticed that there was a very significant amount of oil within this water solution. And that's super easy to spot when you're doing an oil and water, right? Because those things don't like to mix. That's the whole point of making soap and why we use sodium hydroxide, because we have to make those things, you know, mix and form an emulsion. And so this is, this was very cool. It's like, wow, this, this worked. There's a ton of oil contained within the rose hips. And I know I'm saying it a whole lot, but price points do matter, you know? And so as far as rose essential oil versus rose hip, the, the price of rose hips is just kind of nothing. I bought this bag of rose hips on Amazon for like $7 and it was a pound of rose hips. And I used a half of a cup, which equates to a less than an ounce total weight from that bag of rose hips into all of this. And it's had such a beautiful payoff in both the oil form and the water form. So see there on the left, that's the water. Look at how much oil is in there. Are you not excited to use this? Oh my gosh, we're going to use this in soap. We're going to use this in cosmetics. It's going to be a cuckoo bananas awesome time. I really hope you guys try rose hips because so far so good, I am in love. Uh, so yeah, first up, do not. If you're going to be crushing up your rose hips and doing all the things, don't put your hand in it like that. I was peeling out the little sticky, you know, stick hurt bits, you know, out of my hands for the rest of the day when I did that. So don't do it. Just don't. That's what contains all the cool stuff so it can continue to make another rose. It's all the thing. And so don't don't put your hands in it. But for the rest of it, it is wild how oily that rose hip water was. Cuckoo bananas. It's wild how quickly you got a good infusion out of the rose hip itself into an oil. And if I continue to let this sit, it's going to continue to just leach out everything it possibly can from all of these crushed rose hips. So yeah, for me, I really, really love rose hip, but I haven't used it in any soaps yet. So that's what we're going to be doing next week. We're going to be exploring the differences between rose infusions, rose hip infusions within our soaps to see what sort of benefit we get for the actual performance of our soap bars. Because remember, when we're working with soaps and these ingredients, they need to have an actual payoff as far as the bubble, the hand feel, the longevity, the feel of the skin before, after all of the jazz. And so that's what we will be doing and testing next week. Sudzers, thank you for being here. Thank you for existing. What do you think? In your formulations, are you more of a rose person or a rose hip person? I'm definitely leaning rose hip, but as I said, we haven't actually tested them yet. So jury is still out, but we're all gonna be along for this ride together. Thank you so much for being here. You guys are awesome. I hope you're enjoying your Sunday. It's likely that I'm getting this up during the football game. So, you know, I'll be editing this and getting it up while Taylor Swift is not on the screen. But anyway, tomorrow we are starting with all of the soaps and all the things. So definitely subscribe, like, comment, all the things, notify. So you know when I drop that, that would be awesome. Thank you all. Gotta go. It really is almost kickoff time. I have to go. I have to see what Taylor's wearing today. So I'll see you guys all again tomorrow for another round of rose slash rose hip infused soapy fun. Bye.